Madden. And I think a lot of people still wonder if indeed, John, these are two of the best teams in pro football. Yeah, I think if you said, are these the two best teams in pro football right now? I don't think they are, but I think they're two of the best teams there. And I think they're going to be two playoff teams. There are two teams that are playing right now with a heck of a lot of confidence. What about the Giants? How do they approach this Dolphin game? Well, you know, the Giants know what they are. I mean, when you talk to Dan Reeves and, and Phil Sims and all the Giants players, they know that they're a running team. They're a ball control time of possession good solid defense and kicking game but as Dan Reeves said last night he said we have to open this thing up spread it around a little throw the ball a little more just so we can be able to run now the Dolphins I think have gone through somewhat of a change in character have they not well yeah you're going to go through a change in character I think when you lose a quarterback like Dan Marino maybe the best pure passer in the game and they bring in their backup Scott Mitchell then they lose him and they signed 39 year old Steve DeBerg who was already out of football they bring him in and he's doing an amazing job now I'll tell you one thing with Steve DeBerg you have to have a running game and the Miami Dolphins now have a running game in fact they're running the ball better because Steve DeBerg in order to pass has to be able to play pass there's no one better at play pass than Steve DeBerg but to play pass you have to be able to run. And you can't talk about the Dolphins or professional football or history without thinking and talking about Don Shula. What a remarkable job he has done. Dan Marino just passed out of the picture. 327 career wins as he broke the record which had been previously held by George Hallis just a couple of weeks ago. You know, and when Steve DeBerg came here to Miami, he said to me, that he appreciated was the offense and what Dan Marino has built here. He said, but this offensive line is the best pass protecting offensive line he's ever played with. Dalawiso back to kick off the hero from last week against the Phoenix Cardinals. O.J. McDuck Duffy and Mike Williams back deep for the Dolphins. Beautiful day warm in South Florida. Dalawiso's Kick sails out of the end zone through the uprights. And they will start from the 20 behind Steve DeBerg. Signed as a free agent after being let go by Tampa Bay. His offensive line, John Madden just mentioned, the best pass protecting line he's ever played behind. Ron Heller, the ex Eagle at right tackle. Richmond Webb is their best offensive lineman. Higgs and Byers, the two backs, Pryor and Ingram. The ex giant, the wide receivers, and Keith Jackson, the tight end. Steve DeBerg, a remarkable story in his own right. First and 10 at the 20 for the Dolphins. DeBerg will throw it on first down. Batted down on first down by the giant defense, and they've been tough. The front three. Fox, Dillard, and Hamilton. Not spectacular, but very steady. The four linebackers, Lawrence Taylor, Brooks, Bailey, and Miller. In the secondary, Corey Raymond starts at one cornerback spot, Mark Collins at the other. Jackson and Guyton. This looks familiar. Well, we talked about the play pass. They were going to start off with the play pass. They did that. And we're seeing more and more of those batted balls. That time was the nose tackle, Stacy Diller. DeBerg, draw play. Fire stacked up at the line of scrimmage. No game by Dillard, Fox, and Hamilton in the middle of it. You know, just watching this giant defense pad over the over the year, you know, Mike Nolan is a defensive coordinator. Earl Leggett coaches a defensive line. They've done an outstanding job because each week they just get better and better and better. And it's just a team defense. You say, who's the best player? Who's outstanding? Or who's dominating? No one. But they play great, great team defense. Third and nine. And you can just watch the confidence build in that defensive unit. in motion. DeBerg out of the shotgun this time. He gets it out. And off the hands of Ingram. Almost picked off by Raymond. He had a shot at it. There's Dan Marino. Walking around yesterday at practice without any support on that torn Achilles tendon. But today he's wearing a supported boot. And it's driving him crazy to know that they have such a good team. 
you know, he's played all these years and only been in one Super Bowl. He thinks they have a shot to go this year, and it's frustrating him that he's not part of it. Hatcher's kick sails out of bounds. Maggot has no chance to return it, so Phil Sims will again quarterback the Giants. Glad to see DeBerg around because he's not the oldest quarterback in the league now. In front of him, Jumbo Elliott's back. Doug Riesenberg, the other tackle. Roberts, Cratch, and Oates. The rest of the offensive line are Hampton and Jared Bunch, the runners. Callaway and Jackson, the wide receivers. Howard Cross, the tight end. First and ten, the Giants start off just outside their own 41-yard line. Start with two tight ends, Pierce and Cross. The lone back is Hampton. Sims on first down. And Pierce to the Dolphin 36. The Dolphin defensive unit also a bit unheralded, but doing a steady good job. Coleman and Cross the tight of the defensive ends. Golick. The linebackers Cox offered all in the middle. Hollier. Brown and Benson, the cornerbacks. Braggs starts at safety. Hampton and Tillman together in the giant backfield. Tillman swings in motion. Lewis Tillman looking for room, couldn't find it. One of the things that Dan Reeves was saying last night that he wanted to be more balanced, and we're talking to Phil Sims, he says they're going to throw some on first down. That's what they did, and this is their second first down. It looks like Sims thought that Tillman was going to go inside him, and Tillman was going outside him. Tillman thought it was over ball handling. Sims thought it was under ball handling. In the Dolphins secondary, it's Braggs instead of Oliver. They'll miss him before the day is over. Megat goes in motion. Sims back to throw it. To Jared Hunt bouncing off tacklers and gets a giant first down down to about the 26. Brian Cox. The Bears. How about that? And they, I think that Thanksgiving Day game gave them a lot of confidence against the Detroit Lions, and now they're starting to believe that they're a real team, too. But I like the Giants when they play this way, Pat. You know, when they don't just pound, 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 three downs out, when they mix it up, throw on first down, this is a much better Giant offensive attack. First down. They put Jackson in motion. The handoff is to punt. And he perhaps, perhaps get a yard, gets a yard, stopped by Hollier. There's Joe Green. I'll tell you, there's a guy that was a heck of a player that when I was in Oakland, we played so many times when he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in fact, that alignment where the nose tackle, in other words, be number 99 there, the way he lines up, Hawkeye, Joe Green started doing that. And you see Chuck Klingbeil doing it right now. You see the guy right there, the way he's lined up. Joe Green was the first guy that ever did that. This is Megan. After he picked up a couple inside the 25 to about the 23. Joe Green was telling us yesterday at practice that the reason he started lining up that way was because of you. Because he couldn't stop you. We used to do some running in there on him. We would get some running and then and then he started stacking up him in there and then we'd have to take two to block him and then we couldn't block Jack Lambert. So either Green would beat a double team or Lambert would make the tackle. And then we couldn't play pass on Lambert anymore. So it does take away a lot of things. Third and long. Megan is the long set back behind Sims. Sims gets Mark Jackson crossing and he's thrown backwards by Troy Benson. Not enough for a first down. This is Jackson's responsibility. Watch him. He's up at the top of the screen. Now, as you come across and it's on third down, you have to know the depth. You have to get to a point. The Giants are going to go for it on fourth down. And going in a hurry. And Sims over the right side gets close. And I think he got it. Yeah, he did get it. But 
I think that, that was a heck of an aggressive play there by Dan Reeves. But again, I think Jackson had to get all the way down to get that first down. And when he doesn't, then Phil Sims had better make a play like this. That was a heck of a block by his right guard, Bob Kratz. Behind Kratz and Riesenberg, Sims knew where to go. I think if there's one that's solid or the most solid blocker on that giant offensive line this year, it's been right guard Bob Kratz. First and ten at the 14. The handoff is to Hampton. He's got some room inside the five. Hampton scores. From 14 yards out, Rodney Hampton puts the Giants ahead. Hey, listen to this crowd. In fact, there's a lot of Giants oh, fans okay. down here today, and that was a great drive. That's the way offenses in the NFL are supposed to play. It's not one dimensional. It's not one guy. You mix it up. Watch as he starts as a draw. That was going to be a play to the left. Hampton makes the cut. He stops and cuts all the way back and goes around the right end. Great block by Bunch to Springer. Fretwell for the extra point. And a line drive didn't look very good, but it was. And it's seven nothing. Will kick off. Treadwell kicked the extra point, so they have two kickers activated. One of the few teams to do that. McDuffie and Williams back deep for the Dolphins. Is Dan Reeves has to be very happy about that first drive. And he should be happy with the way that he called the plays. Dan Reeves called the plays. I think he had great mixture. As Don Shula said, when Dan Reeves can call a game and get running on you, it can be a long day. That's a long kick. Back to McDuffie out of the end zone, and they'll start again at the 20. The heck of a giant start. But watch this. First of all, you're going to see Cross get a good block here. Then Jared Bunch comes out and gets a block here on Offerdahl. Here's Hampton. He starts, and he sees these two good blocks, and he just bounces it out and goes for a touchdown. But watch Howard Cross. Boom, good block. Collapses the right side. Blocked right there by Bunch, and that was enough to free Rodney Hampton to the four-yard line, and from there, he could just take Dolphins right into the end zone. First series of the Dolphins, not very effective. The first brings about at their own 20. That's him, hit behind the line of scrimmage. Five Brooks. If there is one player on the defense for the Giants that has stood out you remarked about the team play but Brooks would be the good one well it's these two guys here's Brooks here here's Bailey here now what happens is Brooks is now again playing the weak side he's playing Bo and you see Bailey here he's playing Mike which is the strong side they started that way then they switched and then they switched him back for this game and Carlton Bailey, Bailey. ran that one perfectly was well, not Brooks Bailey was first there the bird gets it out to Kirby. Kirby gets a Dolphin first down out to the 39. Stopped by Bailey. The one thing about Steve DeBerg is he's a very bright quarterback. And he's been in that pocket a long time. He's never been a running type quarterback. But he's been in a pocket, you know, for 17, 18 years he's been standing in a pocket. And he experiences things. He knows what it feels to have guys running around. He knows what it feels to look downfield and open, you know, and find an open guy. And that's exactly what he did there. First and ten Dolphins at their own 39. DeBerg will throw it. Has a man open. Jackson down the sideline. Keith Jackson cut down from behind inside the giant 20 at about the 17. What a catch and what a throw. And you see who was covering him. It was Michael Brooks. When we talked to Brooks last night, he said that's the thing that he has to worry about. He says, Jackson, if he gets a free release off the line, he said, there are defenses that I'm going to have to run with him. He said, I'm going to have to do it. Now, we talked about play passing to Berg. Watch how it starts. Watch Steve DeBerg with the great ball fake. See him put that hand in there. Then he brings it out and shows it to you. And then he makes this throw, and again, Jackson makes a great catch, but he has about two steps on Michael Brooks. First and ten. They get to Kirby. 
to about the 15. Terry Kirby has all the tools. Fumbled a couple of times last week in that snow in Dallas, but he's got all the equipment to be a great one. The Dolphin fans, the Raiders 25, Buffalo 24, drops their record, the Bills to 8 and 4. Well, it's hard to say AFC to tell Boy. who the good teams are. Here's the bird with time this time. Incomplete. And no flag. There's the flag out of the end zone. Carlton Bailey. Pass intended for Kirby. Hey, there's a lot of pressure on those inside linebackers, the Giants today, Pat, because the inside receivers, Byers and Jackson, are so tough for the Dolphins. We saw in the play before in that big play there. We saw where uh, Brooks was beaten. Pass interference. Number 54 in the defense. First down. Well, DeBert thought there should have been a flag, didn't he? Uh, he saw it all the way. Here's where it happens right here. There's Carlton Bailey, number 54. And again, this is on Byers. And he just grabbed him with the left hand. That's pass interference. First and goal from the six. DeBert saw it all the way. Byers the deep back. Six yards out. That's one of the things that they always knew that Byers was a pretty good blocker, a good receiver, and they're going to run him more. You know, last week he got that 77-yarder. They want to give him the ball more. Here he is. He's a big, strong running back. They see when he gives the ball, and he doesn't take long strides. He weighs 255 pounds. They always take those short runs, and he is very, very difficult to tackle. Stojanovic to try to tie it up. 7-7. Score tied at Joe Robbie Stadium. Giants and the Dolphins. The National Football League is sponsored by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Levi's loose-fitting jeans. Coca-Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. And by Canon, a world leader in 35-millimeter photography. Let's welcome the airship Shamu to today's game here on CBS. SeaWorld is the nation's premier marine life park featuring killer whales, sharks, penguins, and endangered species such as manatees and sea turtles. Here we have dolphins and giants, neither endangered so far. Oh, that's close by. Yeah, he cut that corner pretty tight, didn't he? I felt a little endangered. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have Shamu here, though. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, you can't beat that. This is Megan. on the play. Megan got it back to about the 37. A good return. But a flag on the play. Alexander made the stop. But they'll bring it back. Not many quiet moments so far. Oh, and this is going to cost the, the Giants close to 20 Lane yards. Hands blocking the back. Gary Number Lane. Four on the return team. The Ten yard penalty. First down. This is going to cost them, like I said, 20, 20 yards of penalties right here. 20 yards of field position. 7-7. Seven, seven. Six oh one left to play in the first quarter. Giants seven, Miami seven. Giants start at their own 16-yard line with a two tight end set up and two wide receivers. No setbacks this time. And now Hampton comes back behind Sam. Sanders gets it out to Callaway. This Callaway will get a first down. Stopped by Benson. Again, I think Dan Reeves is really going for that mixture that he was talking about. If you're going to have mixture, 
It has to be successful, and it has to be on first down. You can't wait to pass on third and long, and that's what the Giants are doing today. That is a little different. Their passing or their game plan is, and they've done it so far, is to pass much more, and especially much more on first down. Now they have Megan as the deep back with Pierce in motion, and Megan the ball carrier. The Dolphins in good pursuit off for Dahl. Jarvis Williams. Anytime you bring Megan in on a first down and he's in there in the in the backfield by himself, you know it's either going to be a pass or if it's going to be a run, it's going to be an outside run. It's going to be a sweep. And that's what that's what they did there. They threw a toss out there and the Dolphin defense was all over that one. The two wide receivers this time split out to the left side. Pierce goes right. Perfect defense there in a screen. Anytime you get a screen pass, that was a screen pass to make it. You want three guys out there. You want a guy in front of the ball and a guy on either side. Now, if you just watch the defense, you see Mega go to the right. Now he's going to sneak out. Here's the screen pass. If we can stop it right now, we can see this is perfect. A guy here, a guy in front, and a guy there. You form a triangle around the screen receiver. That's perfect screen defense. Third and seven. Third and six, caller. In motion, so to Jackson. First down, Giants. Stopped by Stephen Braggs. Bruce hey, Alexander. Remember the last time uh, Jackson on third down ran that crossing pattern and he didn't get enough for the first down, although the Giants went for it on fourth down and, and picked it up. That time, uh, Jackson made the adjustment. As he come on that crossing pattern, he got enough yardage. He gained yardage coming across the field to get enough where if they go to him, it's going to be a first down. Bill Sims has a miss. Six out of six. First and ten. That's much in motion this time. Hampton to the shot. There in a hurry is Jim Cross. Dwight Hoggier with an assist. Yeah, if you look at the at the Giants on first down, they've had seven first downs, and they've made four or more yards three times. They've run five times and passed two times. And I think that's the plan that they have to keep up all day. That's Dan Reeves there with his plan in his hand. And again, one of the few head coaches that calls every offensive play. Megan. Is to Sims right tries to get out in the pass pattern. Still looking for Jackson incomplete. That's his first incompletion. JB Brown was the nearest defender. And I'm sure that Phil Sims is glad to have Jumbo Elliott back. Jumbo Elliott's missed a couple games with a, a bad back, but not only a, a good run blocker, a very good run blocker, but also a good pass protector. And I think he gives Sims a little what you call backside security. Well, that's usually the open side, and that's usually where the defense's best pass rusher comes from. But to get around Jumbo, he's got a long day. Marshall Coleman's the guy trying to do it today. Sims out of the pocket. Whips it up the sideline in the direction of Tap Callaway incomplete. Did you see that number 23, that Troy Vincent come flying up? I've been watching him. I, tell you, I mean, this guy is a, is a heck of a cornerback. Reeves doesn't like that play. I don't know how much court he got on that thing, but he's about 10 yards down the field from where he started. But Troy Vincent made a heck of a oh, play. Yeah. He came up on that thing like he was shot out of a gun. Let's see what, what Dan's upset about. Watch him right there at the end. I don't know what, what he's upset about because I thought that was a good defensive play. Horan back to punt it for the Giants. So Jay McDuffie standing at his own 11 yard line for the Dolphins. And a flag on the play. Offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. That's time. You know, you know, Dan Reeves is a disciplinarian and 
and and he's really a competitor. Yeah, you know I mean, oh, boy, you know this he? guy. And you remember as a player for the Cowboys and a player coach for the Cowboys and and an assistant coach for the Cowboys, head coach at Denver, and now the Giants. There is one fiery man. Down at the one yard line by Willie Beeman, number 21. So the Dolphins have a long way to go. Pulled out for this match between the Giants and the Dolphins. Mike Horan just kicked that ball, which was down at the one yard line by Willie Beeman. Boy, he's done a good job. First and ten at the one for the Dolphins. Deferred the quarterback. Straight ahead to keep fires. Maybe on the line of scrimmage. No more. Yeah, we talk about the things that they've done. I think that this Mike Horan has done an excellent job. You know, you talk about field position. If you look at a football field, directional kicking, here's the numbers on both sides. Now, what... What Dan Reeves wants from his punters is to punt the ball outside the numbers or between the numbers and the sidelines and hem everything in. And Mike Horan has done an excellent job of doing that for this giant team. Second and nine. Myers is losing this time to Bird to throw it. And it down by Corey Miller. We talked about how this started and the kick. Now watch, he's on the right hash. Now he wants to kick it to his right outside those numbers and get it down there. You see the numbers? This is a perfect kick. That's a directional kick. And then you would like to stop it right about the one yard line. And he did that. And there's Willie Beeman. Now you talk about contributions. You always think of running backs and quarterbacks and Warren Taylors. But sometimes it's a guy like a Mike Horan. Third and nine. Terry Kirby gets a clutch first down for the Dolphins. Run out of bounds by David Tate. Greg Jackson missed a tackle. But they, they, they have him backed up here. They go into a shotgun. They give that shovel pass. That is a dangerous pass down there. Watch Jackson right there. He misses a tackle or wouldn't have been a first down. And he allows the runner just to go on. But that was a heck of a gutsy call. I mean, to get in a shotgun on your own goal line and then throw a shovel pass, because we know some bad things can happen. We've seen them happen. This is him. Not much there for him. Here comes DeBerg over to the sideline to talk to one of the assistant coaches. And now back to the huddle. Yeah, you talk about how, how dangerous that play is, Pat. Just look at what DeBerg's looking at when he sees that. He does it with his left hand, and he doesn't throw it where the back was. He throws it where the back is coming to. Kirby just came right into it, but that's kind of a blind shuffle pass. Second and nine. DeBerg looks up to throw and gets it outside. The early prior. Talk about play pass and what it does. He gets a good play pass in there, fires the outside receiver. He's just going to run it out on Corey Raymond. Raymond was showing Fryer a little too much respect. Raymond was playing post or upward corner, and Fryer was running out. First and ten, Kirby replaces Higgs. bit low but could have been caught. Yeah, I think when you've, you've played as long as Steve DeBerg, 17 years in this league, 39 years old, as he said, he's probably done everything, seen everything. His biggest problem here is terminology. Right. It's not what the plays are, what they're doing, but it's what you call what you're doing. He's done an amazing job of absorbing a totally different terminology, he said to us yesterday. Totally different from anything he's ever been exposed to. 
wins. Jackson. Gain of about five. That's the end of the first quarter. With the score, the Giants seven, the Dolphins seven. Back at Joe Robbie Stadium, Pat Summerall and John Madden. There's Lewis Oliver. Hey, the Dolphins are really going to miss Lewis Oliver today, too. He's their free safety, but you can tell, I mean, he's a big guy. Yeah. He's a big free safety and is an excellent hitter. In fact, I remember when he was drafted here by the Dolphins, he said, you expect me to cover a lot of guys, you've got a wrong, the wrong guy, but if you want someone who's going to hit a lot of guys, you got the right guy. Here's the bird on third down out of the shotgun. They need four for a first. The bird got the man open. Flag on the play. On the far sideline. Yeah, there's one in the backfield, and it could be Richmond Webb, who's really been doing a good job on Lawrence Taylor today. But Webb was blocking Taylor, and it was thrown right there. Then there was another flag thrown downfield in the secondary. Mark Ingram, the ex-giant, made the reception, but let's see. Gary Lane. Everything against the Dolphins. What we have here on, on offense is a pick right there. See, they call that where Corey Raymond was picked. That was the, the first one they called. Then the other one's holding against the Dolphins. Pick was by Irving Fryer, and that pick is what got Ingram so open. They got to get all this stuff straight <laughs> yeah. before they talk. A lot of motions. I think he was doing some chill. Little hands first. to the face holding number 78 on the offense. That penalty's declined. Richmond Webb. Offensive pass interference, number 80, 10 yard previous spot foul. That is accepted. Third down. We showed the first one. Here's the second one. It's going to be Richmond Webb right there again. He's been doing a good job on Lawrence Taylor today. But on this play, you see his left hand, it goes right to Taylor's place, face initially. And, of course, the referee is standing right behind the quarterback. So when that hand went to the face, the referee saw it. So that'll make it third and 14. The bird will operate out of the shotgun again. Flag on the play already. That has to be another one against Miami for too much time to wait to Burke threw the ball down there. You knew that wasn't against the Giants. Offense number 73, part of the snap, five-yard penalty, oh, still thank third you. down. Richmond Webb alone, it looked as if it was the whole offensive line. Well, they called it on the right tackle. They call it on Ron Heller. Is who they say moved. Move first. You see him move a little back, and then Webb moves a little back. And sometimes the fire. tackles go the right time, and the snapper, the center, is just in the center of the ball where it's supposed to. I think that happened then. Third and 19. The bird goes for big one. Eric Howard rushing and down goes the bird. Eric Howard with Keith Hamilton. Eric Howard made a heck of a move. Here's Eric Howard here, but watch his quick moves that he makes right now on Richmond Webb. I mean, Webb set up, boom, he clubs him with that right hand, brings that left hand over, and he's right on Steve DeBerg. Eric Howard used to be, of course, a very steady nose tackle. He played that like a defensive. He didn't look like a nose tackle on that one. He no. looked like Richard Dent or someone. Megan at the 35 starts his return from there. Gets about three yards after a long time at the dance. 7-7, seven, seven, the score remains. lately I think right now if you had to say who's the best team or who's the hottest team at least offensively it, it has to be the San Francisco 49ers 7-7 seven, seven tie at Miami's Joe Robbie Stadium they make it the long setback Calloway in motion Megan gonna throw it maybe maybe 
maybe not. He's got some room. An attempted block by Phil Sims and Megan will get to midfield in the first down. A pretty good block by that, Phil Sims. That was a good block by Phil Sims. There aren't a lot of quarterbacks that are any age, let alone at 38 years old. Watch Phil Sims. First of all, it's a pitch. Then it's going to be a pass. There's no one open. He pumps. Now he comes back. Now watch right there. Boom. Phil Sims get that block. And that block is enough to let Dave Megan get the first down. That was smart by Megan. And you're on a run pass for a running back to throw it. If the guy's not wide open, don't throw it. At midfield, first and ten. Sends to Hampton. Rocking Hampton almost broken. Picked up about six. Stopped by Mike Golick. Tripped up by Golick. And one thing I think is, is important, especially for the Giants, is to keep players fresh today because it's 83 degrees and you come from you know, the, the north up there and you're not used to working out in this heat or you haven't since training camp. And the Giants are going to get tired today before the Miami Dolphins do. Second and three. Hampton and Bunch. Hampton again. With Rome. Rodney Hampton. Down to about the 27. He broke that one cleanly. Troy Vincent made the tackle. It's amazing. He even, he even left his blocker. Watch. Cratch is going to come out here, number 61. And he's going to fall down and not block anyone. On this second one right there, you see that outside guy wasn't even blocked? Hampton just ran right by him. Cratch got the first guy, tried to get a second guy, fell down, and Hampton just turned on the burner. First and ten Giants at the Dolphin 27. Score tied at 7. 11 35 left to play in the first half. Megan has replaced Hampton. And Sims, look out. Sims sacked from behind by Marco Coleman. He came around cleanly. And yeah, we were just talking about Jumbo Elliott. You see, here's Elliott. Again, you have to get up quickly. Marco Coleman beats him to the start. See right now, he's beaten because the ball was snapped. Jumbo Elliott didn't get up. Marco Coleman went right around him. Jumbo was still in his stance. It looked as if Coleman had the snap count instead of Elliott. Marco Coleman was one of those guys, you know, that has a lot of quickness. He was a linebacker at one time, and they just made him a down a defensive lineman. So he's one of those pass rushing linebackers. Right? Second down, they give it to Megan, who gets to the 30. Stopped by Jeff Cross and Larry Webster. Yeah, now watch Jumbo here. After that, you know, you know that you've been beaten. You know that you didn't get something, so now you have to go out in the next play, and you have to take it out on the guy. And he says, you made that last one. I don't want you near the pile this time. Third and 13. But watch how he adjusts the ball. He had to throw that one to find a gap in that defense. He had to throw that one sidearm to Megan. Of course, it didn't get enough for a first down. Like you said, Megan makes a heck of an effort, but it brings about Treadwell. Treadwell from 38 yards with Horan holding. Blocked by the Dolphins. They'll take over. J.B. Brown came in to block it. What's your rush here? Mike, Mike Coran is the holder. He gets the ball down. The ball is spun. It just looked like he didn't get any height on it at all. Right. I think he took an extra step on the approach. Kick you for it. First one that misses. I know. Watches the winner eat. <laughs>
barefoot, helmet on backwards, split the uprights. Through the tunnel, hook it, off the stone guy, split the uprights. These guys are good. Off the freeway, through the tunnel, off the scoreboard, split the uprights. Tuesday, no day. You and he's got another little job. Watch this, the tackle blocks down. Here's Chris Singleton. He splits that gap. You see now, he's running free. The kick was a little low, and whap, he knocked it right back where it came from. DeBerg back to throw on first down. Gets it to Higgs. And they get about seven yards. Stopped by Corey Miller. The early scores, the Bears for real, apparently. We saw him gain confidence on Thanksgiving Day, and it carried over. They got three defensive touchdowns today, 30 to 17 over Green Bay. Houston continues to roll. Minnesota shut out Detroit, second and three. Jackson up quickly to make the stop. Yeah, I think the Giants are probably the toughest defense in the league to run against, or one of the toughest to run against. And if you look at Miami today, they're going back to a Dan Marino type offense. They've had a 102 yards of passing and only 11 yards of rushing. So part of that is that their passing has been pretty good. The other part of it is the Giant defense isn't allowing many gaps to run in there. Third and one. Dolphin first down. He fires all those years. We saw Keith Byers with the Philadelphia Eagles, and this looks funny to see him in a Miami Dolphin uniform. He had that big run. Remember on Thanksgiving Day in the snow, 77 yards? He was there. He said he wanted to make a snow angel at the end of the run, and he was there flopping on his back trying to make a snow angel. The guys jumped on him and let him do it. Here's the bird. Ingram. Ingram knocked out of bounds by Corey Raymond. And I think if you want to know if Steve DeBerg, at 39 years old, the oldest player in the NFL, I think if you want to know if he still has an arm, that proves it. The toughest pass to throw is an out from the far hash mark. Steve DeBerg may be 39 years old, but he still has a pro arm. He doesn't look it. Doesn't act it. Doesn't throw like it. Higgs over first, over the right side. Not quite enough. Well, you know, Dan Reeves was a. Uh, Steve DeBerg has had some great coaches. He started out yeah. with the Cowboys and had Tom Landry. Said he learned a lot from Roger Staubach. He had Bill Walsh. He had Dan Reeves. In fact, Dan Reeves said he made a trade when he was in Denver for Steve DeBerg. And he said. It came out of the news, and his wife said, what did you trade for DeBerg for? Yeah. And then they showed a picture of him coming to town on the nightly news. And his wife said, that's the best-looking guy I've ever seen. That's a great trade. Not quite sure is DeBerg and the Dolphins take a timeout. That's their first, so they'll have two left, 6.45 left in the first half. This is something that hasn't always been the case. Before each game, the NFL sends out a representative to check on the shoes that the players are wearing. You know him, John. Yeah, I do. That's uh, from the NFL, representing the NFL. That's Mike Ornstein. And what they do is the players have to use a certain kind of shoes. You see right here, he's checking out. Okay, one team's the Giants. They're at blue. The ball but they have to wear not only you know the same color, but then they have to wear certain brands or only so many of certain brands, and it's gotten to that, you know, that they got a guy that has to come out to check what shoes they're wearing. And some of them they pump them up, some of them they cover the name, some of them they don't cover the name. That's gotten to be big, big business. Oh yeah, I remember. I hate to keep going back to I remember when, but we were lucky to have one pair of shoes. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then if you ever lost a cleat, some guy'd have to go run around. Oh, playing. yeah. 
Try and find a cleat to fix up your shoe, and now they've got shoe police. First and ten to Burns. Fake. He took it and hit fires for another Dawson first down. The one before was to Jackson, the ex Eagle. This one to Byers, the ex Eagle. You know, and that's how the play fake works. When you go to the play fake, you hold the linebackers, then you bring someone across, and they try and get in that hole where the linebackers would have been. And that's what Keith Byers did. Now, watch the play fake. You see, you want to get this play fake. Now, that holds the linebacker. See? And then that's what opened the hole for Byers. Down the give is to Higgs. Higgs spins to about the 20. Looked like he might get more for a moment. Stopped by Corey Raymond. Yeah, there's a guy who, you know, you wonder how do you stay in this league and long enough to win 327 games and. I thought the answer he gave you yesterday was perfect. Yeah, because I couldn't understand yeah. it. I mean, he says that, you know, if you can't control something, uh, you forget about it and just go on to the next thing. And I was never able, I always worried about things I couldn't control. Key word being that you just forget about it. That's hard to do. Deburn. First down to Byer. Ball is loose. The Giants are saying they've got it and they do. They just snatched it out of there. Corey Miller removed the ball from Byers. That's what all defensive players do so well now. I think the guy on the other side, Lawrence Taylor, was probably the first guy that caught everyone that move. Watch Byers 41. He's, free, he's running an option cut. See, now Miller has that has that hand on there and he's working and working it but it was Lawrence Taylor that really knocked it loose because Corey Miller had his hand on it and Taylor come in a whack and he threw a shoulder and fired and I think that loosened the ball up for Corey Miller to get. Miller came away with it. First and ten Giants at their own 15. Sim gets the hand Hampton is hit behind the line. 7 score. Marco Coleman led the defenders. Marco Coleman got that, that one sack, and now, now I think he's starting to get a little confidence. He has a little group there. Marco's mad men. They're starting to get a little deal going here. Second and 10. Hampton, no game. Bunch in Hampton this time behind Sin. Callaway right, Jackson left. Jackson. First down and more. Now there's all the talk about the Giants after they lost Mike Sherrard, which was a big loss for the Giants. But this guy right here, Mark Jackson, has become Phil Simms' go-to guy. And you know, when you talk to Sims, it just... Every time he talks about Mark Jackson, he talks about him with confidence. You know that he's the guy he looks for. He said he's strong, he's quick, he can get open. He said, I really feel good when I'm looking for Mark Jackson. First and ten. Sam's looking at Jackson again. What a catch by Pierce. Aaron Pierce with one hand. Got a bounce by Bragg. Bill Sims gives the thumb up. He gives the clap. Watch that win. You want to, again, the first thing you do is throw it away from defender. So it's not going to be knocked down. It's not going to be intercepted. And then if anyone catches this ball, it's going to be your guy. Play pass. He was looking deep. He comes back to Aaron Pierce, throws it where the defense can't get it. Aaron Pierce makes a great catch. What a catch. Brought him off the bench. Offered all the injured Dolphin. You know, he came into this game. They weren't sure if he was going to play. He had a pulled hamstring that he pulled on Thanksgiving Day against the Cowboys. They weren't really sure up until yesterday whether he would play or not. First and ten. Handoff is to Hampton. Stopped by White Collier and Brian Cox. Right now for an NFL update, let's go back to our New York studio.
All right, Pat, earlier today in Chicago, the Chicago defense put on an outstanding performance. Mark Carrier picking this one off and returning for one of the defensive touchdowns on the day as the Bears won it 30-17 to all the halftime. Highlights coming your way, Pat and John. 7-7. The Giants and Dolphins, second and eight. Pierce is the man in motion. Sim flags, whistles, stop play. Two-minute warning. We get the two-minute warning. This game is what we expected, 7-7. Great basketball features a classic matchup between Duke and Michigan. Also, the NFL on CBS continues Saturday as the 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Check your local listing. All starts with the NFL today at a special time. 3.30 Eastern time. All you need to know. Second and eight. Giants at the Dolphin 47. Sims to throw it. To Chris Calloway. Giant first down to about the 33. You know what they're doing? They're giving Jumbo Elliott some help now. They're bringing Roberts out to help. Watch Jumbo here. Now Rod's the left guard. You see Roberts will come to his left. You see him? As Coleman goes around Jumbo, then Roberts is going to be right there. So Coleman got a sack, but they're not going to let him do it again. And they go in a hurry on first down. They'll throw it again. by Jarvis Williams. Giants offensive effort today 13 good good balance first of all 13 and 14 rushes and passes 65 yards on the ground most by Rodney Hampton 116 throwing. Alan that was what they wanted when they talked last night what they wanted to do was balance out their offense so that they could really go to a running game. Cross, and that'll be another first down. Jarvis Williams with him, but Cross, big, strong, took it away. How about Phil Sims, though? The, you know, the, the, the job that he does and hanging in there and looking and finding and throwing, this guy's also an amazing guy. Giant timeout. They have two left. fans in this stadium don't look like they're really paying attention to the game the way they should. I mean, this is, you know, 7-7, yeah. two of the teams with the best record. I mean, they ought to be into this thing. Well, they got to have something to eat. First and ten. Yeah, they're starting to get into it now. I can feel it. Here's Sim. <laughs> Touchdown, Giants. 20 yards out. I don't know that anyone ever has thrown that pass better than Phil Sims throws it. Remember the Mark Favaro all those years, that seam pass, that tight end or right down the seam, just get back there, hold it, maybe pump, maybe look the other way and throw the pass or right up the field, right in stride. That's a perfect pass. Hey, I, don't, I don't think there's anyone that throws that pass, the seam pass, to a tight end in that position ever. That's his 196th touchdown pass in his NFL career. Spread well. Adds the extra point. The Giants lead 14-7 with a minute 12 seconds left in the first half. Scores, highlights. The latest information, those are the games that you'll be seeing highlights of. Indianapolis over the Jets, 9-6. Washington won. Cleveland beat New Orleans. Strange things happening. They'll bring you up to date. Beautiful day. We look from the airship Shamu. I think I saw an alligator, though. <laughs> they got alligators and stuff down here. That's why the boat was going so fast. <laughs> Zone. 
Yeah, watch. Here's Howard Cross here. We talk about a seam pass. You just run right up the seam here, and as the defense spreads, then you throw the ball right in between it. See, we just watch Cross here. Now, if we can stop it right here, see, here's the short guys. Here's the deep defenders. This ball has to be thrown right in that hole there. And like I said, I don't think anyone has ever done it better than Phil Sims. That one to Howard Cross, but how many times do we see it done to Mark Bavaro? Yeah, and you see that hole. I mean, that hole shortens up on you, too, when you got to short the deep and you have to hit it in between. Here's the bird. Up into the top. Incomplete. On the bounce. Mark Ingram, the intended receiver. Both teams have two time two timeouts remaining. Yeah, Howard Cross scored that touchdown, but you have to remember how it started. Corey Miller took a ball away from Keith Byers when the Dolphins were going in to score. And again, I think that Lawrence Taylor had a lot to do with that play because Miller was trying to get it away from Byers, and Byers is strong. He just can't pull it out of there. You know, people say Lawrence Taylor, not what he used to be, but yesterday I noticed in practice, Dolphin practice, the only jersey that had a number on it was 56 as they worked on it. Should be Mark Collins, and it is. Intended for Tony Martin. Yeah, Tony Martin is the fastest receiver on the Miami Dolphin team. They're trying to get him deep. He's on the far side there. He's just trying to go up. Mark Collins will run stride for stride. In fact, Mark Collins runs a stride in front of him. Mark Collins was running faster than Tony Martin does. He has a step on Martin. And he just watches that ball into his hand as one color glove on one, one color glove on the other side. Look at the push, little push there. Stray hand. Hey, you talk about a guy who's having a good year though, Pat, it's Mark Collins. First and 10 Giants, they have 52 seconds left and two timeouts left. Let's see if they go to work. Sims swings it out to Megan. Megan gets out of bounds after a pickup of nine. J.B. Brown knocked him out of bounds. 50 seconds left. They don't have to use one of their two timeouts. Megan got it out of bounds. And the giant offense, it seems like to me, there's Mark Collins. And if you said who's playing the best defense on this giant team, it's probably Mark Collins. But I think this giant offense has kind of been carried by the defense and the kicking game. But today in this half, they look like they're starting to sink. Come into the yeah, Looking for that balance. Looking down Sims is sacked. By Craig PC. 45 seconds left to go. Sims is saying this one of his receivers. Take it downfield. Yeah, he was waiting for him. And one thing about Phil Sims, and he says, it's not automatic. You have to talk yourself into it, but he will hang in there. And he'll stand in there and stand in there and stand in there. And he did that finally. The BC just got there. 35. Down to 20 seconds left on the clock. Sends a semi rollout. Throws back across the field for punch. You saw him look upfield before the ball got there. Just talking about how confident now the giant offense looked in sync that they had a couple ugly plays. One, no one could get open on the second down. Then in the third down, they tried to run that organized sprint thing out here, and, and, and Jackson couldn't beat Troy Vincent down here on this side of the field. Moran's only punch 60 yards, so Jay McDuffie back deep for the Dolphins. Makes the fair catch at about the 28. Five seconds left before halftime. Phil Sims has seemed in total control. Well, you know, last week he played with an inner ear infection. No, no, that's not like an ear infection. That's the kind that affects your equilibrium and your balance and you have nausea and dizziness and all that stuff and he's had a bad shoulder bad right shoulder for about three weeks 
And I think he's one of those guys that could just ignore those things. Thomas will just run it out. And that's the end of the first half with the score. The Giants 14. The Dolphins 7. Celica, watch out, it's here. Geronimo, an American legend, a new film from Columbia Pictures. American Airlines, something special in the air. And by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. Beautiful afternoon. Early evening in South Florida, 14 7, the Giants over the Dolphins. Let's have a look at the running game, John. Well, uh, if you look, Dave, they, they have good balance. They ran four times to the left, 16 yards, four times in the middle, 14, five times to the right for 35. And, of course, that was also Rodney Hampton's touchdown run was to the right. So not only balance of run and pass, but left, middle, and right. Uh, Halftime statistics, time of possession, usually what the Giants hope to dominate. Uh, they've done that again. Although, as Don Shula was saying to us yesterday, that depends on your offensive philosophy. Sometimes that can be misleading. And I think this is a big one right here, this turnover, where the Dolphins had two turnovers. And, of course, that last one was when Corey Miller got it, Lawrence Taylor knocked it out. That was the drive that the Giants then went ahead 14-7. to Pete Stoyanovich to kick it off to Dave Megan and Chris Callaway back deep for the Giants. Yard line. Bernie Parmalee, the first man down. The pass distribution. Well, you know, that was the thing that they wanted to do is balance out the offense between run and pass. And then even within that, look, seven times to the wide receivers, five times to the tight ends, five times to the running back. So Bill Sims really had a, a pretty good first half of moving the ball and spreading it out. First and ten from their own 16. Rodney Hampton and Jared Bunch behind Phil Sims. Jackson in motion. And that's Hampton. The Dolphins knock him backwards. Led by Brian Cox. I think the, the Dolphin defense needs a little more of Brian Cox now. I mean, he's kind of the emotional guy on this team, the emotional leader, and I felt that the Dolphins were really flat in that first half, especially defensively. I, mean, I think they just kind of waited to see what the Giants were going to do, and they were off balance. And if they're going to get a lift, the emotional lift, this is the guy that gives it to them. He's a tough guy and a good player to go along with it. Dave Beggett is a long setback and sends back to throw it. The sideline intended for Beggett incomplete. Cox. They knew, they knew that they had to cover Megan when he's in there, and, and that's a tough job. I mean, you know, you're covering Dave Megan, it's like covering a wide receiver. As you said, that time Brian Cox got on a man to man, and you watch him right here. He's running stride for stride for Megan, and what he does, he gets position on him where Megan's going to have to go out of bounds to catch it, or Cox is going to get it. Third and eight. Cox this time lined up on the left side, showing a blitz. And here you come. The Giants picked it up. The pass is knocked down. Intended for Callaway. Hit by Vincent. And knocked down, and the Giants will have to punt. I think I would stay away from that Troy Vincent. Matt, if there's anyone in that, in that first half that has been covered well, it's Troy Vincent. There's Doug Riesenberg went limping off. We just saw him. He was the guy that was blocking Brian Cox. Did a good job on that on that down of pass protection. Doug Riesenberg is sort of unheralded. But year in, year out, game in, game out, he does a pretty steady job. Moran's punch to McDuffie at the 40. Cross midfield to the 49, where the Dolphins will take over. 
just in giant territory. Benson looks like he might be shaken just a bit. Yeah, he, I, I just had the feeling that the Dolphins came out a little more inspired the second half. I think that that's probably Don Shula's law, you know, and felt that his team really in the first half it didn't look ready to play, but just coming out in that first drive and the kick and the exchange, they look ready to play. Let's see how they do on offense now. Steve DeBerg. The league's oldest player at quarterback. He's done a whale of a job since he arrived here from Tampa Bay. Back to throw on first down is DeBerg. Open is Irving. Fire inside the 30. Just barely. And that's a perfect example again of the play pass. You want to hold it and get it did. This is what Steve DeBerg did. He got it to a wide receiver then. You can see in the first half, he was two out of five to his wide receivers. Three for three to the tight ends. Five out of eight to the running backs. But again, if you're going to get big plays, you're going to have to get it to Irving Fryer out there. And they're going to have to be able to run it a little bit. Right now, their attack is a little bit askew. They haven't been able to run it. The longest run they've had has been six yards. Mark Collins stop Mark Higgs. You know, this team was never built to be a running team because Don Shula said, you know, every time we would talk about let's run, let's do this, we'd say, well, we don't want to get the ball out of Dan Marino's hands, so you'd go right back to pass, pass protection, pass patterns, and all those things. Marino is such an artist, why take it out of his hands? Split wide to the right this time. Deferred back to throw it. Gets it to fire as it bounces off the top of tacklers and gets down to about the 15. Harlan Bailey. Which fires, he's up here as a wing right here. Again, he'll be in the backfield sometimes and sometimes as a wing, which is a little like a tight end. See, it's an option pass. He runs out, stops, then comes back in and finds the hole. Fires, as you said earlier, takes those short steps, always seems to be on balance. Yeah, so if you ever hit him, you're going to get the full impact. And he still has that impact in that last play. Yes, he does. He can't even straighten up yet. To about a ten and a half. Stopped by Bailey again. Dan Reeves just ran out of court there. Did you see that, Pat? Yeah. He's trying to get as close to the action as he can. He was down there on the, let's see, he was down on the 25-yard line. He ran out of court. The court just kind of jerked him right back. Well, he's got some left, though. Yeah, because he came back to midfield, but he was way down there in the 25. He ran out of hose. Second down. Five. The hand off the Meyer. Bailey is way down to about the seven and a half. Stopped by Michael Brooks. Dan Marino, Don Shula. You know, Dan Marino, after he was injured, he's out for the season. He knows there's no way he can play this year. Had that Achilles tendon operated on, but he still comes to practice every day, goes to every meeting. And what Steve DeBerg said, he said, one of the most impressive things about this Miami Dolphin organization we have been Dan Marino. He said to us yesterday, hey, I've never, there's never been a time when I wasn't out there. I want to be out there. DeBerg, fake to buy it, throws it away. Intended for Tony Martin. A little uh, miscommunication on that play. Well, again, he got that good play fake. I mean, there's, there's no one that does this better. And watch how Steve DeBerg puts a ball in you see, it? he puts the ball right out there and then and then brings it back and then he runs a little bootleg. But Keith Hamilton was right in his face and it, I think he, he Hamilton made him throw it before he really wanted to. Stoyanovich then from 26 yards out for the field goal with Duck Patterson holding. By the Giants. Second block field goal of the day. One piece by both teams. On fourth down. Ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage. They're thinking about last Thursday in Dallas that they could have the ball back. But not in this case. The Giants will take over. 14-7. Giants by a touchdown. 
Now watch Jesse Campbell. He's going to be the second guy in here from the bottom. He's going to block it. You see it right there, number 37. See, he comes in. The wing has to block two. Campbell's the inside guy. He blocks it. Now when it's blocked, if the ball doesn't go beyond the line of scrimmage, then the kicking team can pick it up and could return it. But it's down to right there at the 15, so it's first down for the Giants. Everybody very aware of what to do after what happened in Dallas on Thanksgiving Day. Now if it goes forward, the kicking team can advance it. If it goes backward, the kicking team can still advance it. First down, Giants. They lead it 14-7. The handoff, a fake to Hampton. The handoff, the short pass from Sims is to Pierce, who stays on his feet. Aaron Pierce to the Dolphin 32-yard line. Brian Cox finally got him down. And again, it's that same hole in the defense. You see Cross coming over there to congratulate Pierce, but it was the same pass, the same hole in the defense that Cross had caught for the touchdown. Watch Sims here. Again, he's going a little waggle. Starts out to his left, turns back to his right. He's going to find Pierce right in that hole. He's going to be behind the short guys and in front of the deep guy. And then after that, a missed tackle and a pretty good run by Aaron Pierce. Pierce weighs about 260. He just bounced off. This is Hampton. Inside the 30. On first down to about the 29. Stopped by Marco Coleman. I think one of the things the Giants learned from last week playing the Cardinals, I think Dan Reeves realizes it, that we are a running team, we are a defensive team, we are a kicking game, but doggone, if we're going to continue to be able to run, we're going to have to open it up with a pass, and that's exactly what they've been doing today. Second and eight. The Dolphins have never lost to a team from the NFC East here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Well, the Giants have taken it to him, and the and the Miami Do the Miami Dolphin defense is a is a little soft. Plus, the thing that I've been noticing, they've been missing a lot of tackles today. I mean, you know, that first guy there, like there, they're not getting him. The second guy isn't getting him, and they don't have great pursuit. In Good. fact, today so far, Pat, the Dolphin defense has 20 missed tackles, and I think. A lot of that is, is the Giants' aggressiveness, but some of it is this Dolphin defense is a little soft today. Good block that time. That's Marco Coleman. Uh, Dwight Hollier, who's holding his left wrist and coming out. Don Shuba and Tom Alavadati is defensive coordinator. In the third quarter. Hey, this Dolphin defense had, had better do a couple of things. They had better start watching the tight end. The Giants' tight ends have 132 yards of pass reception. Plus, they better start tackling. Well, the two tight ends are together on the right side this time. And Sims starts Jackson in motion. Gets to Hampton. Hampton down to 15, a flag on the play. That came from the umpire, the guy who's right behind the defensive line, and it's usually holding. Oh, we see it's holding right there against the offensive lineman. I think, I remember back when I was coaching, the thing that used to really kill me was holding. holding. Offense, number 87, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Holding on a running play. And of course, number 87, you said the two tight ends were down in the bottom of the screen, and 87 is Howard Cross, who was one of them. Aaron Pierce was lined up right next to him. But Howard Cross is, has made some good blocks today, too. I mean, he's really he's really taken Jeff Cross and kind of that side of the line. And a few times, he just collapsed that right side of their line. First and 20. Stand start Pierce in motion. Handoff inside to Megan. Megan. Down to about the 22. Light Hollier made the tackle. You know, you're talking about poor tackling before. Well, go ahead, John. No, Dave Megan is one of those guys, Pat, that can make tackles before he gets to a hole, and then while he's in the hole. Watch, he's in the hole, and he's making tackles right there. There are a lot of runners that make moves before they get into a hole, 
and make moves after they get into the hole, but they don't make them in the hole. He's one of the few that does. He has split out wide to the right this time with hands and deep. There's Sims back to throw it. college degrees neither one in hitting I tell you, that's what they need I mean the the Dolphins looked when they came out in the second half like they had a little more inspiration a little more life in them than the Giants who took it out of them and sometimes you need a hit I mean they got a penalty then you get a big hit then you can come up with a big sack those are the ways that defense can turn games around third and nine Cox is showing blitz on the right and he's coming are there. Bruce Alexander. That was exactly what I was talking about. They get the big hit, then you get the sack, and they knock them out. They were getting ready to go in for a touchdown. They had a penalty, then they get a big hit, and then you get the sack. Watch Alexander. He's coming on a blitz. Make it look like he was going to stop and block him, and then he ran right by him, and Alexander just ran right into Sims. From 42 yards out, this is Treadwell again, not Daniel Iso. Treadwell's kick is going to be long enough and is good enough. And the giant lead is now 10 points, 17 to 7. Fell Charities presented a check in the amount of $50,000 to Boys Hope Charity. Accepting the check was Father Paul Sheridan, president of the Boys Hope, and Pat Stokes, the national campaign chairman. 17-7 the score. D'Aloiso kickoff. Treadwell just made the field goal from 42 yards away. Put the Giants ahead by 10. Yeah, they call this team sometime the New York Broncos or whatever, but these three kickers from the, the Broncos, the Dan Reed, brought in have really made a big difference in this game. And here's another one. It sure helps when you don't have to cover those kickoffs, doesn't it? Uh, you take D'Aloiso's kickoff. You remember his field goal last week won the game. Haran, you know, had some great punts. Treadwell just made a field goal. And I mean, there's three guys that, that have really helped. And then I think that all the teams have, have you know, have a lift from that. Like, you you said, I mean, he, this guy has a cannon for a leg. He kicks it out of the end zone. And then the 10 guys that are covering, they feel like, you know, I mean, I mean they're sprinting down the field and, and just lift all their team. First down, Dolphins. Kirby is the lone setback. They heard back to throw it. Got a man deep. And Irving Fryer came up with a catch. Collins on the coverage, but DeBerg is down. Well, he hung in there as long as he could. He made a perfect pass. We talked before, if the Dolphins are going to get a big play, it's going to be to Irving Fryer. You watch this overload here. Two outside linebackers outside. They get the block there, and then Corey Miller comes from one side. Keith Hamilton comes from the other side, and they just sandwich him. And the bird got back up. Here's the completion. This is pretty good coverage here by Collins. He's looking a little too soon. He goes to jump. The ball goes right through his hands. The ball went right between Collins' hands into Irving Fryer. The bird got a little extra color on that jersey now. Now well, that'll happen when you become the middle of a sandwich between Corey Miller and Keith Hamilton. DeBerg is 13 out of 20. Doug Patterson has taken Steve's place as he heads for the locker room. Maybe for another jersey, maybe for a checkup. I think it has to be for, for something he's going to do quickly because I think he's going to go in and get something done and come right back out. That's not, a, that's not an injury run. That's Kirby. Straight ahead to about the 38. Stop by Brooks. Maybe the 39 is where they mark it. Now they got a trainer running across the field. I think he ran in there by himself, 
with one other guy and then a trainer just sprinted in. There he goes. But his sprint is not quite as effective as DeBerg's. Yeah, DeBerg had to, had to get his hat. I mean, he had to get out of here for something. I mean, he was going to get it taken quick care of, and he'll be, I bet he's back here within five minutes. Second down. Anderson back to throw, lost it. I think he got the ball back, but he was sacked. Got hit from behind by Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, he did. Corey ball, Miller, excuse me. And the ball was knocked out, and then it, it bounced right back into his hands. Watch him. He's looking downfield, looking downfield. Now the ball was knocked out there, and look, it just bounces right back up into his hands. And you were right. It was Lawrence Taylor that knocked it out, and then Corey Miller jumped on top of him. Third down, 11. Out of the shotgun. Incomplete. Keith Jackson, I believe, was the intended receiver, but it was well short. They have pretty good pass rush here. Watch 74. Eric Howard. He puts a little pressure on him from behind, makes him step up there and bring the ball down. And just that little thing is sometimes the difference between a completion and an incompletion. So Dale Hatcher will come in to punt for the Dolphins. With 427 left in the third quarter. High kick by Hatcher. Megan signals fair catch at about the 16-yard line. 17. Eric Howard has been very active playing at defensive end. That's Cops. Are they any match for the rock-throwing kids and the trigger-happy adults on both sides? Watch 60 Minutes tonight, followed by Murder, She Wrote and the Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation to dance with the white dog. That's all coming up tonight here on CBS. Hampton and Bunch behind Sims, and Sims will not sit on it. Pass is complete to Jackson, but a flag on the play, and then Jackson lost it. But a penalty flag on the play. But I think if you want to know who the fast go-to guy is for the Giants now, it's Mark Jackson. We found that out. Gary Lane, the referee. Illegal contact. Defense, number 23. Five-yard penalty. First down. Ball against Troy Vincent. But you're right. He looks like a very, very good pass defender. Uh, he's right there all the time. I mean, he's you know, you know, he covers the guy, and he's you know, he's with the guy in the ball wherever things arrive. Troy Vincent always seems to be there. First down at the 24. Sims has quarterback the whole way, and this is Hampton. Nothing to it. A loss, maybe of a yard. In fact, we're going to look at that Steve DeBerg hit. We just got word that he went in for stitches is what it was. If we just look at it again, you'll see it here. And what's going to happen is right here is Hamilton. Here's Corey Miller. And all three helmets are going to hit about right there. See, all three helmets hit. Boom, boom, boom. And then watch this right arm that Corey Miller puts on, on DeBerg as he gets him down. I think that's the one that got the cut, was that forearm to the face when the bird was down. Sims outside to make it. Brought down at about the 28 by Troy Benson and Brian Cox. There's Corey Miller. He's really, he's really picked up his pace, you know, and has become a, a good pass rusher. You know, it's kind of been Lawrence Taylor for years, and I think that as Lawrence Taylor does less, I think Corey Miller as an outside linebacker is going to be doing more. Third and five. The Giants are one out of seven on third down. They have the ball at their own 28. They lead by 10. Sims standing in, incomplete, and no flags this time. And we'll see Mike Horan to punt. J.B. Brown was the defender. That's the other, the other corner, Troy Vincent on one corner, J.B. Brown on the other corner. Two young, good cover guys, and then you put Oliver in the middle, 
That's one of the strengths of this Dolphin defense. O.J. McDuffie back deep for the Dolphins. 247 left to play in the third quarter. And gets it off. A good one. McDuffie at the 20. Got two good blocks. McDuffie still going to about the 34. There's an official back at the 25 saying hold it. No penalty though. That doesn't even look real, does it? Joining us today, the airship Shamu. That shot of Joe Robbie Stadium measures 194 feet in length and 67 feet tall. Doesn't look it from here. Now this is sure a beautiful place for our business. This arena, the football field, the grass field. This is the way to play football. The Byers. <laughs> Corey Raymond and Corey Miller converge to make the stop. Doug Patterson is the quarterback. They also have Hugh Millen and something, if something should happen to Patterson. I would think that, that Steve DeBerg is going to be back in this game before it's over, and I would think that he'll be coming back out on the field shortly. So they would need to stitch him up. Second and about three. Kirby. Trying to pick his way for a Dolphin first down and doesn't quite get there. Carlton Bailey made the stop. up third and short about a yard Kirby comes out and Byers will be the lone setback Eric Howard now has moved over the center third and short they get the Byers flag on the play Brooks hit Byers he might have made the first down maybe not but a penalty marker down. That was a heck of a collision by Michael Brooks, so he read that thing perfectly. Defense, number 74, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. First down. Howard. Maybe he forgot how to play nose tackle. He lined up offside, they said. I don't know. Well, of course, the neutral zone is the football. So if anyone's over the football now. Right now, unless it's a helmet right here, I don't see anyone in the neutral zone. So you can see a hand right there. Now that could be. First down. Pedersen gives to Kirby. Kirby to the giant 45 with less than a minute left in the third quarter. And we just looked a little while ago where the where the Dolphins had only run for 37 yards all day. And to me, that's the story of of, the, of this game and the Giants winning is part of it is the, the Dolphins really haven't been able to get control. And the, and the other part of it is that the Giant defense has had control. They own first place in the NFC East. Dallas plays the Eagles tomorrow night. Kirby again. Kirby spins for close to a first down. Clock stop with six seconds left in the third quarter. It'll be a third and short situation. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 17-7. The Giants lead the Dolphins who have never lost to a team from the NFC East in this stadium. It looked like the Giants were, did jump on that last play, and that's one of the things that they worked on all year. We talked about Steve DeBerg, although he's not in there at quarterback, but being good at play pass. He's also very good at drawing you off sides and make you jump. And the Giants spent the whole week you know, working at not jumping off sides, watching the ball rather than listening to the snap count. Right now, Steve DeBerg is still in the locker room. Some people down in that corner of the end zone looking anxiously at that runway. And that's 
it's the end of the third quarter with the score the Giants 17 the Dolphins 7 our coverage will continue after this message from your local station you're watching the NFL on CBS. Motion. I mean, he ran out of the locker room, down the down the the tunnel, up the field, got the play into the huddle, dropped and back the ball. through the ball. I don't know how you could be ready for that one. You know, like a minute ago, he was lying on some table and some doctor was putting stitches in him. A, a minute later, he's throwing an out pass. I remember one time where he was packing a big voice box. He yeah. lost his voice and played with it. Now here he is back to throw again. Over the middle of Kirby. Who is taken down from behind by Michael Brooks at about the 36-yard line of the Giants. That'll bring up a big third down. They bird 14 out of 22, 217 yards. The one interception by Collins. Third and four. And DeBerg probably hasn't even gotten his, his bearings yet because he wasn't even sure where he was. You see, Eric Howard there, he had a full groin. They taped the groin during the last timeout. He tried to play a play, shook his head, and walked off. And he bore a man came clean. He stretches out for the first down. Don't think he quite got it with a stretch. David Tate had him, though. David Tate, number 49, came on a blitz. He would have had Steve DeBerg, and for some reason, he pulled up, and he let DeBerg throw that one. DeBerg really hung in there. Watch from the left here. You're going to see number 49. Watch him. He pulls up. He stops there. Let's DeBerg throw the ball. And Kirby stuck it out at the end of the effort to try to get the first down, and... They're going to measure. He came close. Hey, how he got rid of that ball with a guy coming right in his face. The guy coming in his face should have ran through him. And throw that ball like that. About six inches, it looks as if that's what the Dolphins need. Watch this stretch by Kirby. And when you've been there, you won 327 games in your career. You know what to do in this situation. Don Shula's team is down by 10 points, so he needs a touchdown and a field goal to tie, or he needs two touchdowns to win if the Giants don't score anymore. Don Shula has made his decision and let it be known to Steve DeBerg, who, by the way, got five stitches in his chin during his trip to the locker room. Fourth and inches at the Giant 32. McGee made the stop on Byers, but Big Keith got the first down. And the reason Big Keith got it is because of those short steps that we were talking about before. He's not a long strider, but he always has, like, always both feet in the ground. And there's not a lot to hit there. He hit, and he just had to make one little spin to get the first down. Right at the giant 30. Kirby back in the backfield. Brooks. You know, if there's anyone that, that this weather is going to affect right now, I think it would be the giant defense generally, and specifically, it would be these big guys right here in front, the defensive line, because they've been rushing, they've been going after DeBerg all day, they've lost Eric Howard, you know, it's, it's, it's hot out there, they're sweating the, you know, you know that whole thing, losing fluids, and it's tough to keep pass rushing at that pace. Second and ten, the bird quickly. Kirby, and Kirby scrambles down, and still scrambling, he's down at about the 21, short of the first down, tripped by Carlton Bailey. 
just look at those those front guys. I mean, the, the Giants' defensive line are not big pass rushers anyway. I think if they're going to get a, a big pass rush, it has to come from one of their linebackers. But you can see that this weather is starting to drain them, especially that front group. Well, Dan Reeves was saying yesterday he thought about that, and so he only has three active wide receivers. And he kept an extra offense, a defensive lineman for that purpose. Third down. Bird gets it to Kirby inside the 10 to the 5. Greg Jackson finally picked him up, but you can see it wearing on that defensive unit. Takes me back to that old question we've asked many times. Why don't the guys on offense get tired? Well, because they know what they're going to do. And if you just watch the defense, but they decided they can't get there with the linemen. So you can see they're putting in their nickel and they're bringing their safeties. They're trying to they're trying to blitz to get there, and that didn't work. And again, against a 39-year-old quarterback, he's seen everything. You're not going to surprise him. First and goal at the five. He was down. He was down. Hit by Bailey and Collins. They tried to get in there. They tried to get in there behind Ron Heller. You know, run at Hamilton. And, and they just kind of stuffed that whole thing. But just there's, there's Collins now. He knows that you hit and then you get down low. Did you see number 25? Collins coming. He hit by his high. And then he says, whoa, this won't work. I better get down here. And just, then he went down for the ankles. Just inside the five. Second down. Fires again. Fires. Flag on the play. In that same area where holding often occurs. Or is called, I Right. Say. And from the guy he calls it, the umpire. Word on Eric Howard, by the way, one of the giant defensive linemen, as you look at Dan Marino. Offense, uh, number 65, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Holding against the center, Dellenbach. Okay, that has to kill a coach. I mean, you know, it, you know when you pass, you kind of expect you're going to get some holding penalties when you're protecting the quarterback. But against the running game, I was thought you should never have a holding penalty. Then you get down there, you're on your goal line, you get that holding penalty, and now you end up, you're on the 15-yard line. So now it gets out of Byers' hand, or the running game hand, and it goes back into the Berg's hand, the shotgun and passing. Second down at the 15. Second and goal from that point. The Berg. Looking. And has the pass picked off by Greg Jackson. Try to force it. And he had time. That was just good coverage. That's one thing about the giant defense. You put them down here, they can't get much of a pass rush, but they sure know how to use that zone defense, that zone coverage. Just sit and read and be patient. They just sit right across the goal line. And Jackson did, and he sat right there and waited for DeBerg's throw. 17-7, the Giants take over. by Bud Light. Miami has two turnovers inside the Giant 20. One a block field goal. That interception. Giants 87 yards on the ground. Miami 51. The Giants lead it 17-7. 10-13 left to play. Bill Sin sets up his offensive unit. Punch to about the nine. Stop by the middle of the Dolphin defense led by Cross. There's Greg Jackson, bat number 47 on the bench. Here he is on the playing field. Now, he's the free safety. Now, watch what a free safety does. He's just going to come back in the middle and read. You see him here? We stop it here. He's just reading DeBerg here. Here he is. He's just watching. DeBerg's trying to throw to, to uh, uh, Jackson there, to Keith Jackson, and he throws it right to Greg Jackson. And that's what a free safety does. Play center field, read the quarterback's eyes, react to the ball. Second and six. The handoff is to Tillman this time. Fresh back for the Giants gets to the nine. Stopped by Benson. Here's Aaron Pierce 
Yeah, and back that's, in. That's their 12. They have 12 or one finger up means one back. I think two tight ends. 21 would be two backs and one tight end. One two, back. Yeah, one back, two tight ends. Rodney Hampton is the one back. Sends it down to five seconds on the play clock, and now he's going to walk away and call a timeout. That'll mean they have two left as Sims heads over to check with Reeves. His team leading by 10. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. And by Pizza Hut, anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. With that magnificent view, piloting the SeaWorld blimp today are Alan Judd and Jose Colon. Both from Orlando, the home of the airship, Shamu, third and one. Sims on the quarterback sneak. Is close. I think he got it. When you think of, of, of Phil Sims, you don't think of him as a as a big, strong guy, but he is a strong guy. He is big too. Yeah, and, you know, you know, and he's gotten a couple of first downs on quarterback sneaks, and that's the second one today. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he has a first down yet or not. The way they're marking that, let me see if I eyeball it from up here. That's going to be. Yeah. Your angle. Uh, I'm not sure from your angle. Our angle. Uh, from my, I say first down from up here. <laughs> just looking at it, just giving it raw eyes. With uh, no machinery that's the best or Raw eyes always best. That's raw eyes from <laughs> <laughs> we, we should have been a pilot. I could see it all the way. I could be a pilot, I could see it, but I, could, I wouldn't get in it. And you had to fly. Watch him. You see how he did a little delay there? And then he just took Cross on, big Jeff Cross, a defense line. He took him on with his right shoulder and had to give him a little push. That was a strong move by Phil Sims. First and ten. Big first down. Sims made it to Hampton. said yes yeah, and he hit it perfect perfect throw but he wanted that one I mean he got that that, that third down that quarterback sneak he got the first then he makes just like you said a perfect throw to Callaway I tell you Phil Sims has, has played a great game today I mean he's easy to get lost up in things but you know as a competitor and a player and doing what has to be done he'll do it all 735 left to play this is Hampton Speeding into Dolphin territory. Cliff Odom made the stop. There's Steve DeBerg. Not sure exactly how many stitches he had in his chin. We heard first five, then we heard seven, but he's got a lot. Well, he ran in there and they stitched it up, and then he, he ran back out and started playing. He just didn't uh, have a good ending to it. He had a pretty good drive, and then he threw an interception down there to Greg Jackson. Seven minutes now left to play. Time certainly a factor. Second and seven. To Tillman, who is hammered at the line of scrimmage. Brian Cox, Craig Vesey. You know, we were talking about Sims and being so strong, and he's a weightlifter. I mean, he lifts weights with offensive linemen and stuff, and the friend Marino's got Dan Marino on the other side that doesn't lift weights, has never worked out or nothing. He said he saw him and Marino hit him on the, on the shoulder and says, hey, you're still lifting weights, huh? Sim says, yeah, yeah, I'm still lifting weights. He says, well, does it help you throw? And Sim goes, no, no, it doesn't help you throw. What do you Marino do that says, for? What do you do it for? Yeah. Third down. Jackson was the man in motion and flag on the play. <laughs> I think William Roberts moved. False start. Offense. Number 66. Prior right. to snap. Five yard penalty. Still third down. 
six penalties today. If you look at the Giants again, we talk about the balance they've had. They run to the left seven times, the middle nine times, to the right seven times. Dan Reeves, I think, has really had a good game plan today of, of balancing everything between pass and run and then balancing within pass and run. Clock running now. Less than six minutes left to play. The Giants lead by ten. Here's Sim to Megan. Megan jumped between two defenders, but Brian Cox made sure he stayed down, and the Dolphins are going to call the timeout. Which means they'll have two left. Yeah, because see what, what Don Shula's thinking now is that they have to take their timeouts because they need two scores to win this game. 17-7, the Giants leading with 5.38 left to play. One CBS continues also on Saturday as the San Francisco 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons. At 4 o'clock Eastern Time, check your local listings. All starts with the NFL today at a special time, 3.30 Eastern Time. All you need to know. Horan back to punt to O.J. McDuffie. This is when Horan needs one of those directional punts. He gets it out of there, and it's a good kick. Directional. Drops it at the five. The Giants will down it at that point inside the five. Jesse Armstead down in a hurry. Hey, and look who else is down there. Mike Coran is down there congratulating those that will be congratulated. Most of them just walk right by him. But he did an excellent effort. Did he, though? That's what they needed. They needed to punt. They needed directional. They needed to drop inside the five-yard line. Mike Coran did it perfectly. That's the second time today he's had a bounce like that inside the five. Usually you see that on artificial turf. Uh, he is a real weapon. He really is. And uh, look, this is a tough day. I mean, when a guy takes in his bandages and he starts blowing out his bandages, that's a that's a full day's work in a in a hot place. That's William Roberts. Left guard has done a heck of a job for the Giants. Plus, big arms inside that bandage. Well, big arms are what <laughs> blow out the bandages. Here's the bird. Down, that's perhaps a safety. It is a safety by Hamilton. Keith Hamilton came. He knew what he had to do. He did it, and then he knew the signal for it. Just gets a push and right here gets to Berg. Number 75. He's really been coming along. He's a good pass rusher. He takes Heller, pushes him with his right hand, pushes him with his left hand, then gets a sack, then gives a signal. That'll be two points for the Giants. And then Miami has a free kick from the 20 yard line. And that makes the score 19 to 7, Giants. Free kick from the 20, as you said. I'll tell you, when you start talking about coach of the year honors, of course, it's not over yet by any means, but Dan Reeves has done one heck of a job. Yeah, and, 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 and we've watched him play, and we've watched him coach, and we've talked to him, and we've watched film of him, and you can just tell a well-coached team when you watch it. And, and, and this team, they don't have the best players. I mean, no. and they, but, but they play as a team so well. I mean, even their defense, they'll lead the league in defense. Maybe no one will go to the Pro Bowl, but that's the kind of coach or the kind of coaching job that Dan Reeves and his staff have done. And it's the little things as well as the publicity and the meeting of the press and the the offensive and defensive approach. He said yesterday, for example, when he hired his defensive coordinator, he knew he needed a little help up front. So he hired Earl Leggett, who's done a heck of a job. And then there's Don Shula, who, you know, you talk about great coaches, one of the greatest of all time, the winningest of all time, and an amazing, amazing man. Hamilton knew what those play was worth now in a free kick you usually have your punter punt it with your kickoff coverage team against their kickoff return and punt return. Hatcher's punt is handled by Megas. And Megas stays on his feet as long as he can. And the Giants will start over from the 35. Yeah, if you just look at the job, 
that the kickers and the special teams have won. D'Aloiso has four kickoffs for four touchbacks, so you don't even have to worry about tackles. Moran has five punts, two inside the seven, and that last one just got the safety for him or put him in position to get a safety, and then on special teams, they've also blocked the field goal attempt. So when they say it's offense, defense, and special teams, today that third one has been there. And, of course, Treadwell hit the field goal from 42 yards out. Carrier stopped by Jarvis Williams holding. I'll tell you, this umpire in today's game is sure getting his his share of holding penalties on the running game. Holding offense number 76, 10 yard penalty, still first down. And Bob Boylston is the umpire today, Pat. And again, he's the guy that lines up right behind the defensive line and. You see penalties or holding penalties a lot on passing, but it seems like we're setting some kind of record for holding penalties in the running game today. Those Mike punters, Duran loosening up. Excuse me. <laughs> just, just, they always practice, don't they? Yep. They do whatever he wants today. He's you know, got a ball and always kicking it up in the air, kicking cups and stuff. Got to have something to talk to. Hit by Jarvis Williams. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Miami Dolphins, and the National Football League is prohibited. Beautiful day. Especially if you're a Giant fan in South Florida. Yeah, there's a lot of Giant fans down yeah. here. It seemed like yesterday we ran into about 10,000 of them as we went from practice field to hotel to our hotel to whatever. And a lot of them just wear the same number. They don't care. I mean, after a while, you get your seat, you can't even tell who you are <laughs> or who your friends are. You all got the same number. But you know whose number that is. Yeah, but I mean, but there's so many of them, you don't know which one you are. Hey, somebody else, hey, 56. Everyone jumps up. In some case, you just try to find out who they are. Second and 15. This is Hampton behind Robert. Uh, trying to stay in bounds, and he does. So the clock continues to run with 425 left. Jarvis Williams made the stop. He has really done a done a good job of blocking is Howard Cross. I mean, he has really helped this team a little as a pass receiver and a lot as a blocker. Miami takes their last time out. <laughs> Sunday on a special edition of the NFL Today, an exclusive CBS Sports poll on the state of the game will reveal what you, the fan, feel like is right or wrong with the NFL. What do you like? What don't you like? Who's the best player? Etc. The handoff here. Lewis Tillman hit at the last minute. That'll bring up fourth down. And now Haran is going to come in and, and have another punt. This is getting to be a, a fun thing to watch. You know, some punters, you know, and that's probably why they that's why they got rid of Sean Landetta. Sure. He went directional punt. And, he didn't have the hang time, and he didn't keep it up there long enough. But look at what Haran has done today. And I like the way, you know, the directional punt. Again, you want to kick it outside the numbers, between the numbers and the sideline. the example of directional kicking. What you want to do is you kick the ball between the numbers and the sideline just like that, then you pin them in and either tackle them right there or you make them try and get all the way across the field. 
which he did three and a half minutes left to play now today's game was produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman the coordinating producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann directed by Larry Cavalina senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin the executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile first and ten Miami at their own ten the Giants leading 19 7 three and a half minutes left Forget about his ability as a faker now. That doesn't help. DeBerg, I'm speaking of. Yeah, now he has no timeouts left, as you said. He has three minutes, 25 seconds, and he needs two touchdowns. Before he could have gotten a touchdown and a field goal to tie, but with that safety, he now needs two touchdowns. And this is getting tight time that borders on panic time for an offense. Second and ten. Deferred. Gets it to Fryer. Fryer looking for room. Trying to get out of bounds. Doesn't. Locke will continue to run. 310 now. Less than 310 remain. At Joe Robbie Stadium. Deferred up with hand signals ready to go. As soon as he can. They have no timeouts left. That was, that was a good tackle by Willie Beaver. A rookie to keep Fryer inbound. Deburg outside to Kirby. This time he does get out of bounds. Kirby's had a good day today. I think one of the reasons maybe DeBerg came here is his eyes are the same color green as the green in the uniform. Think that has anything to do with it? Yeah, that, and I think he, you know, after he gets finished playing, he wants to be a coach, and uh, I think he's going to be an excellent coach. But I think he wasn't he ready be. to coach yet while you can still play. And he said there weren't a lot of teams that he would come back and play with, but the Dolphins are one of them. This pass to Fryer stops the clock. 2.46 left. Now there's a guy who had... Uh, and in many people's opinion, the trouble passed Irving Fryer. But Don Shula was saying yesterday, since he's been here, he's been nothing but good. The best blocking wide receiver he said he's ever seen. That's yeah. a pretty fine compliment. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, I mean, Irving Fryer now is matured. He's a 10-year veteran. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's not the same person that maybe he was seven or eight years ago. Don Shula said he's not only you know, a good receiver, a good blocker, like you said, but he said he has a, a great work ethic. And uh, we're talking about a guy who has a work ethic or enjoys a work ethic is this guy, Don Shula. Right now, he's not his happiest moment. Well, to him, it's all about winning and working. Gets into giant territory to about the 43. Stopped by Willie Beeman. It's going to be defensive holding, I believe. You know, the interesting thing about this, Pat, is the Giants are in their prevent defense. Holding defense. Number 39. Penalties declined. First down. And they really have softened up. But this is what a prevent defense is for. The Dolphins have no timeouts left, although they're going to get one at the two-minute warning. But they need two touchdowns. So you want them to take the time and just, you know, keep them in bounds. Let them catch a ball, but don't let them get a big one. Kirby has eight catches today. As intended for Tony Martin incomplete right at the goal line. Yeah, and that's part of it. That's part of the prevent. They're going to catch those short things, but at, at some time in there, they just won't stay with it. Sometimes they're going to lose their patience. Sometimes they're going to lose yardage. Sometimes they're going to have to go for a big one. Then when they don't get it, then then you're going to get the ball back and win the game. And people won't say the only thing to prevent prevents is prevent you to win. 
When it works, you don't talk about it. When it doesn't yeah. work, I'll guarantee you, that thing jumps up and bites you. Everybody talks about it. Well, but anyway, they're doing it now, so if they do it in red and then say, hey, the prevent looked pretty good. Second and ten. Burks pass is caught by O.J. McDuffie, who fights to get out of bounds, and let's see if he did. Apparently he did and stopped the clock with 2.22 left. The part of the thing, too, the Giants, remember, in that last drive, they're not getting a big pass rush. Their defensive rush guys are really tired. They've already lost Eric Howard. They, so they're, they, they can either play a little softer, play prevent, play zone, or blitz, and they don't want to blitz and give them that quick, easy one. At the 30, then. First and 10, Dolphins. Berg back to throw. Inside, incomplete. Irving Fryer made the diving effort. Fryer tried to buy that one. Yep. That's a 17-year veteran throwing to a 10-yard veteran and try to buy one from the officials. In fact, Fryer still talking to the officials that that one was good. DeBerg is 22 out of 35 for 306 yards. But they've scored only one touchdown. And, of course, that one touchdown was a, a running touchdown. That by Byers way back in the first quarter. Since then, they've been shut out. They just threw a fan out of the stadium for yelling at Brian Cox. Cox goes on the road and he gets in arguments with fans. Remember up in Buffalo? Yeah. And he comes home and gets an argument. Home team fan. Right, well, but I think that proves though that there's not only a lot of Miami fans here, obviously, but there's a lot of Giants fans here today. Don't like to get thrown out of the yard very much. Fires on the screen pass. Fires heads up the middle to about the 20. Should be very close to a first down for the Dolphins as Greg Jackson makes the stop. Now that'll be the two minute warning as the Giants lead the Dolphins by the score of 19 to 7. It seems these days folks are taking a new look at their priorities. With that in mind, Chevy brings you the roomiest full size pickup ever made so that family can come first and work second. The extended cab from Chevrolet. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. As a primary and a father, you're kind of a battery expert. You use a lot of them, right? Yep. Uh, any theories as to why Duracell batteries last so long? They take energy from little kids and they put it into their batteries. <laughs> Don't you wish. Duracell. No other battery lasts longer. This can't be champagne. I like it. Just want to. Mm, that's beautiful. Excuse me? Excuse me. I got the name of this, but don't, don't be too obvious. Sparkling, delicious. No champagne tastes like Bellatore. Frankly, I think it tastes better than champagne. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know the name of this, would you? Bellatore. What's in the Bellatore? Bellatore. Two L's. One sip says it all. Two minutes left as the Giants lead the Dolphins 19 to 7. They'll improve their record. Cowboys play Philadelphia tomorrow night. The Giants already lead by a game. There we see Eric Howard there, number 74. He can't play anymore with a strained groin. We have word that they took Michael Brooks in, Pat, to be x-rayed on his foot. So, obviously, he's not in there either. Here's the bird. Gets the ball. <laughs> to Tony Martin. That'll be enough for a first down. I'll tell you, you see 71 Stacy Diller there? I'll bet you he lost over 10 pounds I'll today. Bet. Bet. They go in a hurry. DeBerg does. Gets the ball of the 10 yard line to Terry Kirby. No, to Keith Byers. 
Beg your pardon. There's a flag on the play. They're going to do it for holding them down. See what you try and do, prevent defense. Miami has no timeout, so you try and tackle them and hold them down. But if you overdo it, they're going to call, call, call a penalty on you. The giant player is down injured on the play as Jesse Armstead. I bet that's what they were saying. Yeah. See, the Dolphins didn't have any timeouts. They were trying to get back to the huddle. They call that one on the Dolphins. They yeah. bring them to business. Let's see the business. That looks pretty good. There's two tacklers. Unnecessary roughness. Number 41, 15-yard penalty. Still third down. I don't know about that. These are trying to get up. Yeah, he was trying to get up. I thought they were going to call it on Armstead, Jesse Armstead, who was holding him down. See, he's trying to get up to get back to the huddle. See, Armstead won't let him up, so he just swung his arm. Oh, that's a bad penalty. That's that's bad. And because Keith Byers is trying to get back to the huddle, Armstead's trying to hold it there. I don't know about that one. That was, that was calling something that didn't happen. A minute 29 left to play as DeBerg goes back to throw it. This is incomplete. Almost picked off by Willie Beeman. There's Jesse Armstead, who was holding Byers or trying to hold him down. Byers is trying to get up. That's where they call the foul on the previous play. And that's the arm that uh, Armstead was holding him with. But it's also, remember, as Byers got up, I think he stepped on him. He could have stepped on his arm. You got a lot of guys going in, getting stitches, guys getting x-rays, fans getting thrown out of the game, arguing with Cox. Pretty deep. Looking pretty good now. And at 24, the bird might have pulled him offside with that cadence. But he'll have a free play. Pass is intercepted in the end zone by Mark Collins. But the Giants, I think, jumped offside. That's right. And, and even Dan Reeves said that that's when he does it. Anytime you get third and long, the bird's going to make you jump. Offside, number 57, five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Said they do it two times, third and long and third and short. Looked like on this one when DeBerg gave it, everyone jumped. You see the two outside guys, they get in there first. They get in the neutral zone, and that's when they blew the whistle. Threw the flag. So they stopped the clock with a minute 16 left to play. It's third down. DeBerg out of the shotgun. Kirby back with it. cleanly and all of a sudden it was gone right, that was a, a, a perfect throw though and, and it hit McDuffie right in the hands right at the top and as he brought it down he fumbled it again DeBerg throwing it where either McDuffie's going to catch it or no one's going to get it he leaves him gets it up in the air McDuffie has it there but doesn't come down with it gotta have both feet down with it the Dolphins. The clock remains, the game clock remains at a minute and nine seconds. Fourth down now. As amazing as Don Shuley is, you don't have a play for this one, Pat, when you're fourth and 20 and you're two touchdowns down. Who does? And no timeouts and a minute and nine on the clock. I would rather be in that guy's shoes. Fourth and 20 and DeBerg goes back to throw it. He's got to loft it into the end zone. touchdown. Maybe he did have one. Tony Martin came down with the rebound. That was the play. That was yeah. it. That's why he's won 327 games. Just throw it up, up in the end zone there in a prevent defense. Your guy just dropped one and now he's going to catch it. 19-13. This is a Hail Mary fourth down against a prevent. You get in, you jump ball, you try and knock it up in the air. Everyone was in there. McDuffie would back off to the slider. Tony Martin 
was back off to the side, and he caught it for the touchdown. Stoyanovich for the extra point, and it's good. 19-14. Now you can make that argument against the free man defense. Yeah. And now you better watch out your onside kick. Now this becomes the biggest play. One minute, one second left to play. See, McDuffie went up, three Giants were there, and sometimes you teach that. You teach like Tony Martin. You know, everyone just doesn't get the jump ball, just stand off to the side and try and get the rebound off the jump ball. Steve DeBerg laughs. He says, I can't take credit for that. I can't act like I knew what I was doing on fourth and 20. You can give them a lot of credit, though, for coming back with a very gutsy performance after the stitches were put in his chin. He's hung in there all day. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be an exciting play here. Again, a minute, one second left. The Dolphins have no timeouts, and this is going to be an onside kick, and if they get this onside kick, they have a shot. Giants have all but two men up inside or on the 50-yard line. Yeah, this is their hands team. They'll have nine guys from the 45 to the 50. They put five on the front line and four behind them. The four guys are trying to get in the gap. Now the Dolphins have four guys to the right of Stoyanovich behind him, but they'll run left and get on the other side of the field. And it looks like Stoyanovich is going to kick it to their left. See, they got the ship. Should kick it that way. Now ready. They got the bounce. The scramble is on. The Giants, one of their bets say they got it. And the Giants come up with the ball. The ball behaved exactly like you'd like it to behave with that high bounce. That's what you wanted to do. As you say, you wanted to take a couple of little ones, little one, little one, little one, then you wanted to take a big one right there, right over that whole bunch of guys. Then it gets back there. It looked like the Dolphins had it. Then McCaffrey jumped on it. Right. One, two in the high one. And a flag on the play. How do you guys do that? That's amazing. I think that's the stuff that they work on, and they know and, and they know what they're doing. Ryan Cox earlier was in a fight with someone in the stands, and now it looks like someone on his own team. He wants after somebody, it looks like. Ryan Maybe Cox. it's an official, and they're trying to keep him away. You don't want too much of that, I don't think. He doesn't want to lose, but there's nothing you can do about that now. This isn't going to help us. Reset the game clock to 59 seconds. The ball was touched before it went out of bounds. 59 seconds. Set the game clock to 59 seconds. Another look. Again, because the ball was touched, you see, when it's touched, they have to start the clock. Tell you, that was a heck of a jump. The Dolphins had a shot at it. Ryan Cox still upset. He's upset at the at the official. But Mike Williams really got up in the air and got his hands on that ball, but couldn't hold on to it. Ed McCaffrey ended up falling on it. Now, no timeouts left for the Dolphins, so the Giants will let the clock start and let it continue to run. That's Joe Green with Brian Cox saying, what good are we going to have from you if you get thrown out of the game week after week? Yeah, well, they're both walking to the uh, to the house. I mean, they're down there on the goal line right now. The ball's on the 35-yard line, and Joe Green and If there's a guy you want to control, if there's a guy you want to control, it's Joe Green. Yeah, Joe's following him into the house. Come back out, and try and start anything else. And so the Giants. The clock runs out. Defeat the Miami Dolphins 19 to 14. Hi, 
everybody. Dave, we're all worried. About what? You haven't ordered your holiday ham from my store. Or the cookies I made for you. Or your turkey. Or your eggnog. Or your fruitcake. Yeah, what gives? Nothing. Wendy's is making a new Big Bacon Classic combo. Oh. It's a quarter pound of fresh beef, three strips of bacon, and the works with Biggie fries and a cold drink. So this holiday, save your appetite. And I thought you forgot my prune tart. Who could forget that? Try Wendy's Big Bacon Classic Combo today. Hey, so this four-year-old tells me how the toy he got last year broke in a week. I said, hey, pal, I'm just a Santa's helper, but I'll talk to the big guy. I was smart this year. I got my gifts to give it with the Citibank Classic Visa. They'll replace or repair anything that accidentally breaks. I put a bag of toys down next to me. It was gone. Who would steal from Santa's help? Well, it's okay, because Citibank replaced the toys. But I know one guy who's going to get a stocking full of coal. A few of the Santa's helpers who rely on not just Visa, Citibank Visa. The great masters define civilization in Europe. Now we're defining it on the way there. United Airlines renowned international service to 15 cities all across Europe. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. So for John Madden, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from Joe Robbie Stadium, where the final score was the Giants 19, Miami 14. 60 minutes is next, except on the West Coast and in the Mountain Time Zone. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.